a customer of ours pressed this BB86 bottom bracket into uh, this uh, little BMX bike and I'm feeling the bearing over here and it feels great, super smooth. But if you come over here, the bearing feels very tight and notchy. Okay, and in order to demonstrate this, I'm gonna go ahead and pop the crank in here, uh, or a crank, and I'm gonna do a little uh, uh, acceleration test to kind of show you guys what I mean by how it doesn't feel that great. Now, BB86 is the same, whether it is a BMX bike, or a mount, excuse me, or a road bike, or a gravel bike, because BB86 is 41 by 86.5. Now, all right, I want you guys to see that this thing, okay, we're not just spinning it. You see how it wants to stop down here? This is, this is the indication that things are not real free. You see how that doesn't want to return to zero like that? That's your, that's your big indication right there that we've got a, a problem that, because it's only tight on one side, most likely the bottom bracket itself is out of spec. It is, uh, it's gonna be the 40.98 or so on this side that feels awesome, and over here on this side, for some reason, it's going to be smaller than that. So it's putting a lot of pressure on that bearing, it's squeezing it like crazy, and making it uh, spin poorly. So first we need to extract the module in order to uh, measure the frame and see what's going on. So I'm gonna tighten it in to the frame. You've seen some of our extraction videos before, uh, but I wanna tighten the tool into the frame. Right, so I've got actually a free hand right now. I'll try to turn the volume down. <laughs> so I just pulled this out of here and you can take my word for it. The bearing feels great now. That's always a dead giveaway. If you ever remove a module where the bearing felt tight and all of a sudden it feels great again, or you remove a bearing from a module or a BB30 frame or whatever, and it goes from feeling gritty and horrible to you pop, pop it out and all of a sudden it feels buttery and great, that is a dead giveaway that you have the frame is out of spec. Is it possible that the bearing could be out of spec? You can go ahead and measure it, but uh, bearings are precision ground to like four decimal places, so they're usually way better to use as a standard than anything else you would have in the shop. Now for BB86 press fit to be correct, it must be around 40.98. Okay, that's very specific. 40.9798 is the Goldilocks zone for a proper press fit. Now, um, let me show you a little trick uh, that gets played on you when you're measuring a cylinder. So you see this right here. So our target is supposed to be um, basically 40.98, like I said, or that <clears throat> or that 1. Uh, uh, 1.613 is about what we're looking for. So when you come over here, this one right now is sitting at um, 1.6 um, and uh, 0 0.08. <laughs> that's not good okay that's way undersized but watch this watch what happens when I this is kind of interesting watch what happens when I turn the tool look at that how'd that happen how can I go like that and it's tight and then I go like this and it's not all right and then I can measure this and then what do we get we're getting almost in spec all right so what's going on um, holes not round that's mainly the problem. Uh, this is very typical of bikes that are welded together. Uh, even though this cylinder was uh, turned on a CNC machine like, uh, like our bottom brackets are, because it's a cylinder, see that? So it's turned very accurately. The problem is when you come back in here and you start welding elements to it, it creates uh, stress risers and uh, starts to want to egg out portion of this. So that's really what's happened. Now there's no slag or anything, there's no high spots in there as far as like there's not a piece of you know like welded material something that should have been cleaned out this is just a dimensional issue uh with this hole uh where it's um oblong uh due to um welding stresses during con construction and uh you know it didn't get welded um excuse me reamed afterward i, I would have uh, wanted to do that so we're going to do it right now i'm going to put a link down below to the uh, long version of the full explanation on how this reaming process works start to finish. So I'm only going to ream the side that was giving us trouble uh, that was undersized. Um, the other side, I'm gonna give it just a, I'm gonna go ahead and run the ream in there a little bit. It's really not gonna cut anything, but just to make sure if there was a high spot or something that I didn't detect. Um, this will make everything 40.98, no matter what. Unless it's already uh, bigger than that, 
If it's slightly smaller than that, it will cut it off. If it's, if it's the same size, it's just gonna leave it alone. So it's pretty convenient that way. I'm up here really close. I'm pulling this out right now and I wanted to show you that we had some material removal. Okay. Um, it's bound to happen. I mean, it was too small, so we needed to make it uh, a little bit bigger, but uh, that's a uh, substantial amount of material to come out of there. Uh, I think that's a pretty good explanation for why the bearing wasn't rolling very well. It was getting over compressed by quite a bit. Well, after the reaming, predictably, we are now the correct size, so let's go ahead and install a bottom bracket in. I used cutting oil. It's essential to remove all of it. Now I'm using some White Lightning Clean Streak, a shop favorite. You can also use denatured alcohol. Um, these things are gonna be safe on the paint, and it's gonna do all the degreasing you need it to do and uh, leave no residue. Uh, do not use acetone, brake clean, carburetor cleaner, anything like that, okay, like automotive cleaners and whatnot. Pretty much just use either denatured alcohol or white lightning clean streak and uh, you'll be fine. Because grease and oil contamination will defeat the retaining compound that we're going to be using. Um, even though this is an aluminum on aluminum fit, or, uh, anodized aluminum to raw aluminum essentially, um, we are going to be using the uh, Vibratite 530. You can also use Loctite 609, but we provide 530 with the modules when you buy them. Um, only use this. Do not use grease to install a press fit bottom bracket. So it should press in with a nice even drag. This is the same bottom bracket that was in here. So uh, because we obviously want to assess the change that's been made. So the original bearings, everything are in it. It's exactly how it was removed from the bike is how it's going to be going or going back in. And um, if for some reason a bearing does get damaged uh, during this process, the removal process especially, uh, even though our tools are back cut so that that really isn't gonna happen, if it does happen, it's uh, not the end of the world um, at all. The module itself, the housing lasts indefinitely and you can always change the bearings out. All right, so uh, with aluminum on aluminum fits, you don't always get the uh, popping sound, that very satisfying and to some people terrifying popping sound you get with press fitting uh, because the um, because the retaining compound is uh, anaerobic and you're excluding oxygen with a press fit ergo it's starting to light off um, doesn't always do that on these but trust me it works all right let's do that acceleration test got our same uh, Ultegra crank here so I'm just gonna push it in just like that get it in through both bearings and then we're going to Okay, so you can see you can see the difference already, right? You notice how it doesn't want to it doesn't want to stop anywhere. It doesn't want to stay up on its own in any way whatsoever, and it's spinning obviously very freely, no problems whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, big difference. All right, well, that says it all, doesn't it?